Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on human geography of late. In this session, we are going to talk about one of the very interesting model in human geography that is related to demography. It is called demographic transition theory or many times demographic transition model. So what is this demographic transition? What does it talk about developed and developing nations demographic patterns? And also what are its various applications and also what is its criticism? These are the things that we are going to learn today in this session. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about this demographic transition theory which came in 1945. Now remember 1945 that is end of World War II and entire world was now being recreated after the wars. It means there was lots of restructuring going on around the world. So that is when this theory came in citing the transition of demography that is changes in population patterns, their structure and also different settlement patterns emerged like development of suburbia right suburban development became one of the key aspects in modern urban theories after world war ii itself so we see there is a transition in various countries that is majorly developed and developing countries that is what is the basic premise of this theory so now let's understand this demographic transition theory which is credited to frank notiston now frank notiston talked about this particular theory in terms of what basically as a generalization now, when we say generalization, it is basically talking about a general application across the world, right? So, it was talking about the changing pattern of mortality, fertility and growth rate. Now, remember these three key words here, mortality, fertility and growth rate as societies move from one demographic regime to another demographic regime. Now, this demographic regime is what? The structure of the society in terms of its demography, in terms of its population and its various parameters in a given phase of economic development. Right. So if you observe mortality and fertility and growth rates have been different in different time periods. In ancient times, they were different. In medieval ages, they were different. In modern times, after the advent of industrialization or industrial revolution, they were different. And now they are different. Right. So that is what we say in different regimes. Right. So this theory was based on the data from majorly Western countries. And when we say Western countries, what does it mean? Mostly we are talking about data from the Western Europe and Americas. Right. So that's important. So which experienced a transition in demography from their different stages from low birth rate and low mortality to a particular rising population later on. So we observe this particular theory here that demographic transition theory studies the relationship between economic development and population growth. So primarily we see different phases of population growth in accordance with the development of economies. Right from the pastoral agrarian economy to the modern industrial economy and service economy, there is a transition that we need to learn. So this theory gives gives us an insight, a generalization about the world patterns of demography that was in transition and can be observed through various graphical representation. So it discusses the change in birth rate and death rate primarily according to which you can see this mortality, fertility and then growth rate. So if you observe here in this graph, what you observe? This is a time and this is the birth or death rate per thousand population. Now this graph is divided in two axes on these two parameters and we observe of three lines of different colors one this is orange color is the total population growth then red color is the death rate and green color is the birth rate and it has been divided into several phases like these particular four phases that is pre-developmental phase high birth rate and falling death rate phase then stable death rate falling birth rate phase and lastly the developed phase so from pre-development to development phases this is what we say as demographic regimes. So now let's understand what Notiston has to say and also the graphical representation analysis. So in demographic transition theory, if you observe or demographic transition word or phrase itself was first used in 1929 by Warren Thompson. But later on, it was clear cut 
theory which was built by Frank Notiston in 1945 referring to this historical process of change of population or demographic characteristics. That's important here. So this process of demographic change began for most part in later 18th century. Now remember later 18th century, the same time when Malthusian theory came, after that Marxian theory came and then we see this demographic transition theory talking about this phase of industrial revolution and this population growth and a sudden rise of world population. Right? So from pre-development to developmental phase. So demographic transition should not be regarded as law of population growth is one very important point that you should not be confused that it's not a law of population growth. Rather, it is a generalized description of the historical phenomena that happened across the world. Right? The evolutionary process that we learn. So in simple terms, it is a theory which attempts to do what? to specify general laws by human population change in terms of its size, structure and spatially emphasis on the developmental parameters like industrialization, rise of health and family planning measures, right? Rise of hospitalization facilities, new developments in science and technology that led to sudden transformation of the world population. These are the things part of demographic transition theory. So it is frequently accepted as useful tool in describing the demographic history of a country if you want to see that. So where is the important point here? It is important to understand that if you know well the demographic transition theory and you know which phase or which population regime is there in our country at this present state or for that matter in any given country at the present state we can understand this characteristics related to economic development and change in population growth so the theory postulates a particular pattern of demographic change especially from high fertility and high mortality to low fertility and no mortality right so there is a society which was predominantly agrarian pastoral in characteristic now that has dominant urban and industrial as well as literate and modern society. So how this social transformation happened, economic transformation happened and as alongside it, what happened was the demographic transition happened, right? So this is the main core of this particular theory. Now, according to this theory, if you observe, all countries pass through stages of various demographic transitions, which is accompanied by industrialization and economic development. Now, remember, this statement is telling you about the major concept on which this theory has been built, right? So that's important. So notice then gave four stages, as you can observe here, one, two, three, and four stages, four regimes of population transition. So first one is basically, the first stage is called the pre-developmental stage, the stage of high birth rate and high death rate. Now, if you observe here, birth rate and death rate both are high in this situation. So what are the various reasons for this? Remember, here total population is very low, right? So total population is low because both of them are high. So as many birth happen, as many death happen. So population remains stationary or low. But what are the reasons behind it? So if you want to learn reasons, here are the reasons. So look at this particular list. Birth rate is high as a result of what? There are several reasons, lack of family planning measures, high infant mortality rate, need for workers in agriculture, religious beliefs, children considered as economic assets, death rate is high because of famine, lack of clean water and sanitation, lack of health care. So if you observe these death rate and birth rate are high due to several reasons that we say. Also war, competition for food from predators such as rats and others and also lack of education. So remember in today's world as well, where are these conditions found? In several African countries and third world countries as we say. For example, Sierra Leone, Somalia. These countries are still in pre-developmental phase where you have high birth rate and, and high death rate on the account of these reasons itself. Isn't it? So that's where we can locate these particular countries. Now let's go to the second one. The second stage is basically what? An early expanding phase. What is it? Now you see from here, Till this point, this is where you have the total population is now expanding, rising. Why is it rising? Because of the factor that birth rate remains high, but now gradually death rate is now falling in this phase. In this phase, from here to here, this death rate is now going down. 
So why is death rate going down? Let's understand. Because of these reasons, what are the reasons? Improved healthcare, for example, you know, smallpox vaccine and other vaccinations happened, then improved hygiene and sanitation, then improved food production and storage, improved transportation facilities, and decreased infant mortality rates. These are the factors that led to the decrease or downfall in the death rate. But remember, what was constant here? Birth rate did not fall down. So there was a gap between birth rate and death rate. And that is the reason precisely why total population is on rise here. That's why it says early expanding phase, right? Then if you observe, the third one is the next phase, which is from this point to this point in terms of birth rate. So birth rate is now dynamically falling down in this. And what about death rate? It's now attaining constancy somewhat, right? In the lower level. So stage of declining birth rate and low death rate. So what is there? Now gradually the gap between the birth rate and death rate which was very high from the second to the third. At the end of the third you see this closing down. This gap is now closing down at the end of the third phase, right? So what are the reasons? The reasons here are high level of family planning available, infant mortality at a very lower rate, increased mechanization, increased service economy, increased standard of living and also the most important point is the changing status of women, gender empowerment. All these factors are very important here in the end of the third phase where you see again the birth rate also declining gradually and also the death rate in declining gradually. So what is happening because of this? The total population which was going on the peak is now stabilizing, seems to be almost stable at the end of the third one, right? Here somewhere you find this stability, right? So if you want to locate India, where would you locate? Currently, our country India is located somewhere here, almost at the fag end of the third phase where we are trying to have population policy and also we are thinking of stabilizing the economy as well as stabilizing the population together right so that's where we are heading from this peak it is being supposed to now coming down to this balance level so that we are moving towards this development in future right so when we look into the fourth stage now where do we see fourth stage almost birth rate and death rate both are low so now you observe it is just antagonic or contrast to the first phase here so pre-development, high birth and high death rate and development, low birth rate and low death rate, right? And that's why you see the declining trend of population growth, right? So that's important. So it is also called stage of stationary population. You see here the stationary population, it means it's almost not growing or it is growing almost very, very close to zero. Right. So that's important. So in India, if you want to observe, as we have learned, the demographic transition has been relatively slow, but steady. That's also important. And as a result, the country is able to avoid adverse impact of two rapid changes as well. Now, remember, if you have two rapid changes in demography, there are several problems as well in the society. Right. For example, one problem that we observe in all the developed countries which have passed through all the phases and now they are into the development phases what you observe there their youth population their youth dividend is very low and for india because we have survived across all the phases and we have done it slowly so what is happening our youth dividend is very high that's why we say 21st century is the century for india so because we have youth population which is the huge number Right. And that's where you see the problems in developed countries where they have old population, aging population. Right. So that is what we understand by this particular adverse effects as well. Right. So what you observe in this particular diagram in 1970s, because of quantitative techniques and quantitative revolution, many scholars like Peter Haggett also thought about making it a particular theory in different phases than the earlier ones so he further envisaged this in future like what would happen after the fourth like for example what would be there in the fifth one so he thought about it he did his quantitative data analysis and also some projections so you see from high stationary to early expanding to late expanding to low stationary to the declining phase that is here which is the future projection here is important right so what you observe here Examples of some countries in the early stages, all the developed countries were like this. 
Later on, what you see as further example, if you want, Egypt, Kenya and India are transitioning from second to third. Brazil is now going further. Now USA, Japan, France, UK, all these developed nations are in the fourth and now we are transitioning down. Some countries like Germany in European Union is showing negative population growth. That is where you say declination and this is just 1970s projection of Peter Haggett you can see, right? So you can understand where the future is going and this is what is the importance of demographic transition model that through this model what you can see is you cannot get a pinpointed analysis or conclusion but you can have a trend analysis you can have a generalization of world population that is where this population theory is very important right so at last let's learn about the criticism of this demographic transition theory so there are several criticism which can be understood here so firstly what is there the theory is merely based on empirical observations of experiences in various parts of western world like Europe, America and Australia. Then it's neither predictive nor its stages are segmental and inevitable. So it's not that clearly inevitable and segmental. Remember there is a transitioning happening so you cannot get clear-cut inferences drawn from it. Then role of man's technological innovations or technical innovations have been ignored in these theory, right? So that's what we say that for example in the field of medicine and medical health and facilities, remember a lot of things have changed which have affected mortality significantly, birth rate significantly, death rate significantly which has not been emphasized. There is a generalization here. So it does not provide a fundamental explanation for the process of fertility decline as well. Why would the fertility decline? Because fertility decline can be because of medical reasons, health reasons, societal reasons, economic reasons and several other reasons which has not been clearly mentioned. Also, it does not provide a time frame for a country to move from one stage to the other. It simply gives you a transition, but it does not say how much we could expect a particular time for transition from one phase to the other. 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. So about this, no estimation has been done. And lastly, it does not hold good for developing countries mostly because of there are several reasons in developing countries because of which their growth rate is impacted, not just fertility rate and death rate not just birth rate and death rate for that matter that's why we see there is a drastic change from the developed countries to the developing countries parameters and that's where this demographic transition theory does not apply to the point but definitely it's a very useful theory for all demographic studies and population studies because it gives us a general picture of the entire world so that's why it is also important in our human geography in order to understand the various patterns related to the human settlements according to human transition or population transition and that's why we should understand it clearly. So now when we have learned about demographic transition theory in details, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different models and theories in human geography like Crystaller's central place theory and others. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching, best wishes.